I'm pleased to let more people know about these kinds of classical martial arts. Viewing the demonstration of classical martial arts is a way of understanding the depth and fighting spirit of each ancient school. Popularizing Kobudo is helping many people to take another look at Japan's ancient traditions. Mm, I'm sure everybody enjoyed the demonstration. Mm. So what did you think of the various uh, classical schools and techniques? Um, I was interested that the uh, demonstration wasn't a competition and the main purpose is to preserve skills and traditions. Mm. Um, it's very similar to other ongoing work to keep alive cultural traditions such as uh, um, lacquerware or ceramics. Mm. Mm. And there were so many unusual weapons that I've never saw on the display. What did, what did you think of them? Um, uh, perhaps some people may feel that uh, practicing with uh, such uh, weapons isn't necessary in the modern society. Mm -hmm. But um, they represent the starting point for modern martial arts, and that's why these various schools are dedicated to keeping alive this tradition. Mm. So, Nobuaki, as we mentioned before, your karate school evolved out of the Ryukyu Kobujutsu in Okinawa, and you actually brought some of the Ryukyu Kobujutsu weapons along with you today. Yes. Wow, there are so many. Uh, they are very, very interesting. And in feudal times, Ryukyu Kobujutsu weapons were developed from farming tools and really? everyday objects. Yes. Wow. The people sought uh, clever ways to use what they had at hand. Mm -hmm. So. Let's take a look at them closely. Okay. Okay. So, first of all, so. As you know, this is nunchaku. Many people know they are nunchaku from yeah, the grocery film. Yeah, I think a lot of people are. Yes. Yeah. But they were actually first used as the tool to pull horse. <gasps> oh, for yeah. horses! Yes. So I didn't know that also. Mm -mm, me neither. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. This is a uh, tonfer. This is called tonfer. Yes. Okay, how do it you was that? used for crushing bean chaff. Ooh. So now it's uh, developed into the, the baton used by the Japanese police. <laughs> yeah! Oh! Yes, yes. <laughs> it looks like it's part of your body. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and you know what is this? This looks like an oar for rowing a boat, doesn't it? Exactly, this is all. Oh, it is? This oh, is all. I was right. called <laughs> ache. This is called an ache. Mm. It was originally an oil for rowing, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, this is for, so how can I say, put some sand to the eyes of the <gasps> opponent. Sand in the eyes? Yes. And Ooh. go back to home <laughs> by oh. rowing the boat. The <laughs> yes, yes. Convenient. Convenient, <laughs> convenient. And what yeah. is this? Ah. It's like a big turtle. This is very interesting. This is timbe and loaching. Timbe and rochin. Yes, rochin is basically a short spear made from a piece of wood with a metal blade. Mm, pretty mm. sharp. Yeah, and as a timbe is used as a shield. What is mm. it made out of? So this one here is made from a turtle shell, but seems like the rotten seeds uh, covered with uh, goat skin were also used. Ooh. Yes, combined it's called the timbe techniques. Timbe techniques. Like this. Can you see? No, I can't see you. And, <gasps> but, yeah. and then I get, ooh, so, 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 so. <gasps> This is the technique, timber technique. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And? Oh, something else. So, where do you think this, this uh, weapon uh, come from? Mm, maybe people use it for cooking, to cook meat or something like that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, but, like barbecue um, party. This is like, this is a <laughs> chopstick. Oh, chopstick. To, to catch a uh, hot charcoal in a Japanese <gasps> traditional charcoal Ooh. stove, you know. Oh. Yeah, it becomes a weapon. Sai. Oh. So, we can stop the sword here. It's some weapon. Yes, it's a weapon. But our origin is chopstick. Mm, wow. Yeah, so, I've never realized weapon. that such weapons develop from everyday things. Everyday things, yeah. It is yes, interesting. Yes, yes. Mm. All right, so now it's time for our front runners, and we continue our martial arts theme with kudo or Japanese archery. Let's see how one man is striving to fire the perfect arrow. 
Kudo is the way of the bow. Atsuhito Masubuchi was once known as the target master with an almost perfect strike rate. The distance to the target is 28 meters. It's just 36 centimeters across, and hitting any part of it is valid. In competition, archers are also judged on their movements and posture. At the age of 29, Masubuchi became the youngest ever Kyudoka to win the prestigious Emperor's Cup. The following year, however, he failed to qualify for the final, although he never missed the target once. The judges told him this. You are simply hitting the target. You are not doing Kyudo. My way of doing Kyudo was incorrect. Seisha Seichu, the essence of Kyudo, states that the correct posture and mental attitude will naturally bring the arrow to the target. Masubuchi thought deeply about this philosophy, but found it so hard to put into practice that he once dropped his bow in competition. After turning 50, Masubuchi decided he would fundamentally revise his Kyudo. It's no good. Your hands are shaking when you draw. That's your problem. The world of Kyudo follows a strict hierarchy, so it's very rare for seniors to ask younger archers for their opinions like this. I'm not worried about my pride. I'm trying to start again from zero. Many years after having his Kyudo dismissed, Masubuchi decided to return to the Emperor's Cup again last year. Prior to the tournament, he visited someone he deeply respects. I'm grateful for your time. Not at all, if you don't mind taking my advice. <laughs> Hiroshi Okazaki is a Kyudo master who's won the Emperor's Cup three times. He's also one of the judges. Masubuchi was seeking some expert guidance, but wasn't expecting what he heard. It doesn't matter where the arrow goes. Don't try too hard to fire well. That's better. Okazaki clears his mind, takes a wide draw, and remains stable. Even if you make a mistake, you can always learn something. It will always lead you to the next stage. You need to try and break your own new ground. The day of the Emperor's Cup arrives. Masubuchi is aiming to win the coveted prize for the first time in 21 years. There is a morning and afternoon qualifying tournament with two arrows fired in each session. Masubuchi begins the long walk to fire his first arrow. The judges are already keeping score. The full house looks to see if Masubuchi can make a comeback. I could feel the really tense atmosphere. I could almost feel myself going pale. Okazaki looks on as Masubuchi fires. His hands are shaking, and he cannot achieve a wide draw. He's the only archer to miss the target with his first arrow. With his second arrow, Masubuchi feels the pressure. He wants to make up for his earlier miss. This time, he strikes the target. At this stage, he is 40th out of 108 participants. Only the top 20 can make the final. Masubuchi needs to make at least one of his two remaining arrows count, as only archers who strike the target twice or more can progress. I try to clear my mind, but I found myself thinking about various things. He shoots his third arrow, but misses. 
If he misses with his final arrow, he knows he won't progress. I had nothing left to lose, so I just went for it. Masubuchi takes his widest draw of the tournament so far. The arrow flies true and pierces the center of the target. Having made enough hits, Masubuchi's progress will now depend on the points he receives for his posture and mental attitude. Masubuchi's number is 91. I didn't make it. Masubuchi's tournament is over. I can see that Masabuchi is really giving everything he's got, and that's why I think he has the power to keep growing. There's no doubt that Atsuhito Masabuchi will keep refining his kudo and be back at the Emperor's Cup. Mm, it was great to get an insight into the depth of kudo. That's right. Mm, Kudo is not just a game of bows and arrows. When Masubuchi was 29, he was very skilled at hitting the target, mm -hmm. but he hadn't achieved enough spiritual development. Mm -hmm. Masubuchi said that after reaching 50, he became more modest and determined to deepen his understanding of Kudo. Wow. Mm, the quest to understand martial arts really is a long and difficult one. I bet. So how long does a martial arts practitioner have to search before they start finding answers? Uh, I've been practicing karate for more than 36 years, but I still haven't found the answer. Not yet? Not oh, yet, not yet. You're learning. Mm. <laughs> the study of martial arts is a lifelong endeavor and you always have to keep looking. Right. So, Nobuyaki, I suppose you have many experiences after practicing for so long. Mm. Um, let me tell you about something that happened when I was overseas. Um, after we'd finished our practice, mm -hmm. I suggested we clean dojo. Okay. Yeah. The students had just started karate and asked why they had to clean the dojo themselves. <laughs> <laughs> but they said we should get uh, some uh, cleaners in. Mm. Ah, so I said that if the dojo is dirty with your sweat, it is natural that you should be the one to clean up. Mm, you're right. Mm. So at first, the students couldn't understand what I meant, mm -hmm. but within a few days, they were quietly wiping the floors. Ooh, great yeah. experience. Mm. Thank you, Nobuki, for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for watching Sports Japan, and we'll see you next time.